We've been avoiding, you know, having to not deal with serious injuries this season. And this one, we're just hoping we can avoid it again. Because I know we've had the on and off injuries with Mullins and Hicks for the most part. And Austin Hayes missed a little bit of time. But it hasn't been anything long term that we had to, you know, worry about. But Felix Bautista last night, um, it was weird because at first when you saw that he slipped, maybe you thought it was the leg, but he wasn't limping. Come to find out, it was shoulder soreness in his throwing shoulder because when he slipped and was, you know, I think he threw 102, um, his shoulder just kind of, you know, I guess it showed pain. I mean, obviously when you throw that hard a lot of the time, you're, you're going to have, have pain afterwards. But the scary thing is, he got taken out of the game, because at first you're thinking, like, okay, maybe he just slipped, it is what it is, but he got taken out of the game, Cologne came in, it was a 2-2 count, Cologne came in through one pitch, got the strike three, and he ended up getting the save over Bautista. And now the question is, uh, what what is what's going on with Felix Bautista? How long is he going to be out? Are we going to have him again this season? That question is still yet to be answered. And what do the Orioles do, whether it's short-term or long-term, in the closer role for Felix Bautista? And I'm going to kind of go through that with with you guys and just, you know, give you what I would do, some options that maybe the team can go go with while he's out or if he's out the whole season, what they should do. But if it's short-term, there's a bunch of different options you can go with. Because if it's short-term, 10, 10, you know, 15 games, what whatever, excuse me, you have a guy like Cano who can go out there and do it, but the problem is, in the times he's pitched in the ninth inning this year with a lead, he's been a little bit shaky. Cologne would probably be my one option because I feel like, you know, he's been good most of the time. There are times where his slider isn't working and, you know, boom, that thing gets hit for a homer, but that has been a very rare occurrence for him this year. Plus, you got Jacob Webb, who since coming to the team has just been excellent, even though he's had some, you know, outings where he's been a little rough, but he's been able to rebound from it. And <clears throat> maybe even CNL Perez, who's been pitching a lot better as of late and does have a save this year, those are some options you can go there. Plus, people are saying, oh, well, you know, um, you got Tyler Wells, who was the closer before Jorge Lopez, and maybe he can come up and, you know, do that. And the thing with that is, I don't necessarily know if you want Tyler Wells in that spot, because I get he's done it before, but the whole reason we called him down to the minor leagues is because he was wore out. He's never pitched this many innings before he was a starter in the rotation at the beginning of the year, and he was pitching excellent. But once he got past that 110 innings pitch mark, he just started crumbling. And I know a closer most of the time, it's only one inning, maybe sometimes less, sometimes more. But with Tyler Wells, and if we do bring him back up, the question is going to be, is he going to be like he was at the beginning of the year or before we sent him down? If he's going to pitch like he was at the beginning of the year, then sure, maybe think about putting him in that closer role. But if he's going to continue pitching like he was before we sent him down, right before that you know, period, then I don't know if you necessarily want to put him in that role there. Plus, people are saying, well, D.L. Hall, he's been working on you know, becoming a closer and all that. And that's one of those things, too, where I'm like, yeah, but... He's technically still a rookie, and I know there's been rare occasions, like I know people turn back to 2002, like, well, what about the Angels when they called up K-Rod? Look, look what that did for them. They won the World Series. But you, you can't expect a rookie, a guy with little to no experience, to come in and close games out in big situations, considering, yeah, we're probably going to make the playoffs. We're 80 and 48. At this point, if we don't make the playoffs, then, you know, that's a huge collapse, but we're still trying to win the division here. We're still trying to get that home field in the division series if we do, you know, win the division, or the AL East, I should say, and finish with the best record in the American League. We're still, you know, factoring into this kind of stuff here where, yeah, playoffs is probably happening, but you got other things going on, going around that, you know, you can you can do out there. Now, if this is long-term, then the Orioles could necessarily be in trouble 
but they can also try a closer by committee. Now, again, there are teams out there that are successful that do it. The Rays do it all the time. I don't necessarily think they have like their set ninth inning guy, but they win ball games because they do that. And, you know, if Cano's one of those guys where he might be able to get a save, but then you might not be able to go out there and ask him to do it the next night, so you got other guys out there that can do it. And who knows? I mean, I know he's been up and down with the Orioles, but I've liked what I've seen from him recently, that being Fujinami. Maybe he can come out there a couple times and, you know, get the job done. I mean, he was stellar in the eighth yesterday when we were down by a run, keeping it a one-run ball game to which we eventually won because Gunnar Henderson hit a two-run homer in the bottom of that inning. You know, the Orioles have their options. And I guess at this point, uh, Orioles fans have to realize he's going to go on the injured list, but our hope is that it's just the 10-day injured list, meaning that he'll be back sometime in September before the playoffs. And maybe even during that time, especially if we have some stuff clinched, Maybe we don't use them as often until we get to October, but again, it's more of just a we'll wait and see type thing, and injuries like that always stink because, you know, Brandon Hyde said, you know, he was healthy when we sent him out there. There was no discomfort before the game or during the game until that moment, so it's just one of those injuries where it sucks. It happens to pitchers a lot. You know, you just never know when it's going to happen, and with Felix... I mean, I don't want to be that type of person that's been like, he's been used a lot this year, because lately, you know, he hasn't really been being used a lot. The Orioles have basically strictly kept him to tied game, ninth inning, or coming in the ninth inning with a lead in the save situation. Those are the only times he's going to pitch. If it's a four-run lead or greater, he's not going to come out to pitch. If we're losing, whether it's by 10 runs or one run, he's not going to come out there. And recently, the Orioles have had games where they haven't needed to get saves from him because they've been blowing out teams, or maybe he comes out in the ninth in a tied game to send it to the tenth. We haven't seen much of him lately because of that, and I don't know if that has a lot to do with what happened last night, maybe he was just so used to pitching that by the time he... Because I think there was one point in time where he had like four days rest and whatnot. But, you know, the thing is, I know he, he he's probably big impact. Because we've seen guys in the lineup this year get hurt and other guys step up. But this could be the time where the bullpen, which has been good, even if you take him out of the picture, it's still been good some of these guys have to snuff up into different roles that maybe, you know, they weren't expected to be in, but I can see Cano definitely being the brunt of the save, you know, closer guy if Felix Bautista is out for a while or even out for the season, and you got other guys that can do it if it doesn't pan out. I mean, 2014, I remember, the Orioles, they trotted Tommy Hunter out there as their closer, and he looked good for a while, but then started struggling, and they said, you know what, Zach Britton, you come in and do it, and this could be the same situation with, like, D.L. Hall, where it's like, he was a starter, but maybe, who knows, maybe D.L. Hall can pan out as a closer bullpen guy, and this could be his moment to do it as well, but until we get more information about the injury, and what's, you know, how long Bautista's going to be out, we're just going to have to go into tonight knowing obviously he's not there, which is sucks because it's his bobblehead night. And we'll just have to work with the guys that we have against a Rocky team that is 48 and 80. Considering this stretch, I think the toughest games we have from here on out the rest of the season are do we have four more games against the Rays? We have two more series against the Red Sox who are in the midst of a playoff push. And we have another series against Houston. Other than that, all of our other series are against teams that are under 500. So if there's a time for Bautista to miss a couple of games before the postseason, it would be this one, this stretch here where you're playing teams that, yeah, are going to try to play spoiler for, you know, maybe not necessarily knocking us out of the playoffs, but not having us win the AL East and not having us be the number one seed in the AL. But you know, at the same point in time, since you're playing the teams that you're supposed to beat, it, it could be a bit of a easier time, then, you know, you can send some of these guys out there in the positions that maybe they're not meant to, but in a series like that Tampa Bay Rays series, that one's going to be huge, because if you are up by three games heading into that series or more, and you split or take three out of four or sweep, then you're looking at really being able to run away with this division in the end. But other than that, that's probably the biggest series that the Orioles have for the rest of the year. And maybe that Astros series, but they're kind of, you know, slumping a little bit right now as it is.
So, yeah, that's just my thoughts on everything uh, that happened last night with Felix Bautista. Like, I'm glad we got the win, but you can tell two outs, two strikes. It, the crowd went from, you know, doing their normal thing, cheering, come on, get the third out, we're going to win this game, to just everything went quiet. You could hear a pin drop, and then when he walked off the field with the trainer and the manager and everybody else was just like, oh no, like, can we not have this happen? Like, we're in the midst of our best season in 40 years. We can potentially win 100 plus games. We can potentially win a World Series. And this is happening. Our all-star closer, the best closer in the league. I don't even think it's close. I just, I don't know. It's, um, it, I mean, it happens to every team. And they say the best teams always overcome adversity. And we've been so good at doing that this year that I hope that no matter how long Felix is out for, that we can just keep on carrying the way we have. I mean, there was that whole you know, uh, John Angelo's Kevin Brown suspension thing that we just kind of, you know, we played through it and, you know, we didn't let it distract us and all this and whatnot. And then, of course, like I said, the Mullins injury, the Hicks injury, the Hayes injury, we haven't really let it affect us too much. And even, you know, we've been pretty much most of the year, actually all of the year, uh, without Dylan Tate in the bullpen, and that necessarily hasn't been a huge blow. But right at the beginning of the year, you're losing a seventh, eighth inning guy that you know can be very, very dominant, and he's probably not going to pitch in the majors at all this season. So, yeah, that's my thoughts on this. You can tell me in the comments below what do you think, but until then, um, I guess I will see you later tonight after the Ravens-Buccaneers final preseason game.